the new 10.5 inch iPad Pro. Should you consider it? If you're a fan of the iPad, then last Monday's WWDC keynote was a huge day for you. That's where, of course, Apple announced iOS 11, which is great for iPad users, but it's also where they announced two new iPads, the updated 12.9-inch iPad Pro and a brand new form factor 10.5-inch iPad Pro, and that's what we're unboxing right here. So the most obvious difference with this new iPad Pro is, of course, the form factor. 10.5 inches, first time Apple has ever made an iPad at that size. So inside the box, of course, you'll find the actual iPad unit itself, along with additional documentation and accessories. So inside this little packet, you'll find a small Welcome to iPad Pro user guide, gives you some tips as far as hardware buttons and functionality, using the Tips app, using Smart Connector, etc. You also have some regulatory documentation. You have the Apple stickers, thumbs up for the Apple stickers, of course. And if you happen to opt for a cellular enabled iPad Pro, as I did here, you're gonna find a SIM eject tool inside that little packet as well to eject the SIM card. All right, what else is in here? Well, you also have the lightning to USB cable, and it's just a standard one meter lightning to USB-A cable, so it's not gonna work with the latest 2017 or 2016 MacBook Pro, which only has USB-C port, so keep that in mind. And you also have a 12 watt power adapter with a USB-A female port for that lightning to USB cable. And this will charge your iPad Pro, but it won't charge it at the maximum speed. You can actually use a 29 watt adapter with this new iPad Pro, because unlike last year's 9.7 inch model, this model supports fast charging, so keep that in mind. There's also this little indention here, that's because the iPad Pro has a camera lip like the iPhone. So yeah, not ideal, but it does have a camera lip. So I'll just ease it out of its protective packaging, just like that. And here it is folks, the 10.5 inch iPad Pro in the flesh. Now we're gonna run down a lot of the hardware features found on this new updated iPad. So let's begin with the seven megapixel FaceTime HD camera supports 1080p video recording and an f2.2 aperture. Now both of these cameras, the FaceTime HD and the rear camera are both basically iPhone 7 transplants. So you get a f1.8 aperture here on the 12 megapixel rear camera that's capable of shooting 4K at 30 frames per second. You get that quad LED true tone flash and optical image stabilization. And at first for an iPad, you get the Touch ID 2 fingerprint sensor that can be used to unlock your device, Apple Pay, and it's much faster. The Smart Connector is an iPad Pro exclusive. This allows you to connect devices like Apple's Smart Keyboard. You don't have to pair, you don't have to charge the keyboard. It just works as soon as you connect it. You also have dual microphones for calls, video recording, and audio recording. You have your sleep button, which happens to be next to one of the speakers. On the opposite side, there's the other speaker. And on the bottom, you have your two additional speakers. So a total of four speakers. You have your lightning port, which supports fast charging and Apple's USB 3 enabled accessories. You have your two independent volume buttons, no mute switch to be found, of course. You have your headphone jack, 3.5 millimeter. And on the rear, you have the Apple logo, and it is nice and shiny. At the bottom, you have the iPad text, designed by Apple in California, and some additional regulatory information. You have those chamfered edges, which are shiny on the iPad Pro. You don't get that shiny chamfered edge on Apple's recently released $329 iPad, so keep that in mind. That is sort of a luxury thing now. You also have the cellular antenna if you opted for a cellular enabled iPad Pro. And the same thing can be said for the SIM card slot. This is of course cellular enabled iPad Pros only. So you guys know me, you know the drill by now. I like to power it up and run a Geekbench benchmark test just to see what I should expect performance wise. So here we go. A very healthy four gigabytes of RAM. You have that A10X Fusion processor. This is a six core processor that dedicates three of the cores to high performance things and three of the cores to low performance things, which helps it reach that 10 hour battery life. It also has a 12 core GPU. So you're gonna have excellent graphic performance. And as you can see, excellent single core and multi-core scores. But with Apple's chip architecture and their trajectory, we already knew, we already expected the new iPad Pro to be a beast performance wise, but really the standout feature for this iPad Pro is the display, seriously. And not only is the screen larger, but the bezels are smaller, so the display really just pops out at you. And that's something that only the 10.5 inch iPad Pro can claim. The 12.9 inch model, even though it is refreshed with new internal components and things of that nature, the form factor still remains the same. So you get those larger bezels on that larger iPad, the smaller bezels on the 10.5 inch model 
make the display pop. But the good news is that outside of size, everything else between these two devices, the 12.9 inch model and the 10.5 inch model are exactly the same. You get true tone on both displays, which makes the display much more appealing to the eyes in any sort of light. It's gonna automatically white balance for you. But the real star of the show this go around is something that's unfortunately a little difficult to show you in this video. It is ProMotion. This is 120 hertz refresh rate. And this is a variable refresh rate, so it can go up or down depending on the content being displayed. But it makes text much more legible when you're scrolling through. You can actually read text as you scroll. You don't get that ghosting effect that you get on older hardware where it makes the text blurry as you scroll and it's immediately noticeable. Uh, it's something that may not sound like a standout feature in the press materials, but trust me folks, it makes a big difference. It even makes a difference when you're writing with the Apple Pencil. Thanks to ProMotion, you now get 20 milliseconds of latency with the Apple Pencil, which is gonna make writing with this thing feel just that much more natural. It feels instantaneous much more closer to writing on a piece of paper than before. If you can imagine that, it was already good before, but now it's even better, much more smooth, and the feedback is just almost immediate. And if you're well-versed with the Apple Pencil, perhaps you use it in apps like Procreate or you draw in the Notes app, for instance, you're gonna really notice this change up front. One of the really cool features about this refresh is that now you get basically an iPhone 7 camera, both FaceTime and the so-called iSight camera on the rear. You get the same quality that you would get from your iPhone for the most part. So you get stabilized footage, 4K footage here. You can see I'm shooting a 4K video and it is stabilized. You get optical image stabilization, which is great for shooting handheld. So what does this mean? Well, it means that you could, well, you might look a little silly, but you could legitimately use your iPad Pro and take photos, take videos, and have some really good results. That stabilized footage makes a huge difference. Low light capabilities are, are much improved, especially over the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, which had a terrible camera, but it's even better than the 9.7 inch from last year. And here are some of the photos here. So continuing the running theme, no compromises, excellent stills photos, excellent videos. The FaceTime HD camera also received an iPhone 7-esque upgrade, so you get a 1080p FaceTime HD camera, and this is gonna help you step your game up when it comes to selfies and FaceTime calls. And like all iPad Pro models, the four speaker setup sounds absolutely phenomenal with music playback or any sort of media playback. And like I mentioned earlier, for the very first time, Touch ID 2 is here on the iPad, so you can unlock your device even faster on your iPad Pro, and of course, authenticate with things like Apple Pay. And it's really exciting that Apple has updated the lightning connector on its smaller iPad Pro. The 10.5 inch model now gets support for USB 3 accessories, so you can use the camera connection kit, which is USB 3 enabled, and you can also use the SD card, lightning SD card reader, which is USB 3 enabled as well. You also get fast charging, so you can use a 29 watt USB Type-C power adapter, connect that with a USB-C to lightning cable, and get faster charging with your iPad Pro. One of the big areas that makes the iPad Pro line stand out when compared to the rest of the line is its support for smart accessories using the smart connector. So the smart keyboard has been redesigned for the 10.5 inch iPad Pro. It is now larger, and here's the unboxing here. Get some documentation showing you how to use it. We'll just pull it out of the box like that. Pull back the tab, and you can see it's very much like a smart cover infused with the keyboard. If you've never used one of these before, basically that is what you should expect. So it just opens up like this to expose the keyboard, and it doesn't use any batteries. It doesn't need a charger pair. You just connect these three pins to the smart connector on your iPad Pro, and it's magnetized so it will easily connect, and it, you can instantly start typing. And you can orient this thing in a variety of different ways. I'm gonna show you how to do so right now. So if I just wanna put it in the keyboard mode so we can start typing, you do it like that. And it works really well to start typing. So now I can put it just in smart cover mode so it protects it. Albeit it's not as pretty as a standard smart cover, it is kind of bulky. And you also have sort of a presentation mode. The moral of the story is that this device is very flexible and can adapt to your needs. I did notice though that the keyboard doesn't exactly sit flat on my desk at all times. And I've heard that that can wear in over time and it will get better, but just something to keep in mind. I do appreciate the improved keys though. They're larger, they have a nice tactile clicky feel. You're never gonna mistake this thing for a mechanical keyboard, but it is a good keyboard to use in a pinch and I can effectively type on it. 
Now I do have another complaint. While the smart cover in the smart keyboard does protect the front of your iPad, the back is left exposed and Apple isn't making apparently any sort of rear case. And that's disappointing, especially when you consider that there's this big camera lip sticking out that can easily get scratched. Now, if you opt for the cellular model, which I do recommend if you can, you'll notice the nicely designed body color antenna area. And you'll also notice that there is an embedded Apple SIM. So if you provide your own SIM, you can actually have two SIM cards inside this thing at the same time. One that's not removable, one that you can remove. And that non-removable Apple SIM allows you to quickly connect to a variety of different networks. You can even connect with a prepaid plan if you wish to do so. So it's nice to have that option. Now, if you're a digital artist or someone who takes notes with the Apple Pencil, you'll be happy to hear that all the latency benefits apply to the already existing Apple Pencil, so you don't have to buy an upgraded pencil to use the ProMotion feature, which provides less latency and it just feels more natural when you draw. So the 10.5 inch iPad Pro is the iPad. It is small enough to where it fits comfortably in your hand and it's large enough to where it can accommodate a full-size keyboard. It's gonna get even better though, once iOS 11 drops, it's gonna bring a whole bunch of new cool features to the table. We'll have more on that in a future post and video, but make sure you read the full article associated with this video because I go more in depth with some of my thinking as to why I have switched over from my MacBook Pro to this iPad Pro. This is the first iPad Pro, in my opinion, that has shipped with no compromises. It has a great camera, it's lightweight, it's thin, it's large enough to be usable as a actual pro machine where you can type on and draw on. It has a generous amount of storage space and entry level models, and it comes with four gigabytes of RAM across the board. Yes, the iPad Pro can get quite expensive, especially when paired with an Apple Pencil and smart keyboard, but it definitely lives up to its pro moniker. And it will especially so with the upcoming release of iOS 11. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.